so last one or two days i'm observing that many of the news channels newspapers and online sites are flooded with news related to detection of two zika virus cases in the city of pune and during this time i have noticed that many of my patients friends or even doctor friends have been discussing about this on whatsapp and uh, telephone calls and so many places as to what is zika virus what is this new problem in the city of pune what we should do about it so i decided that let us get an informative and reliable informative video related to zika virus on our youtube channel so hello friends i am dr piyush ashok choudhury bringing to you the next video on our channel of fever care center for infectious diseases and in this video we are going to have scientific information discussed about zika virus because virus so what is this virus is it something new or is it the new corona or what is it so friends actually it is not a new virus but this virus was very much known in the zika forest area of uganda since uh, as early as 1947 but because it was limited to a specific geographic location there was not much of global awareness or global discussion as far as healthcare services are concerned related to this virus now around 2015 2016 there were outbreaks noticed of zika virus in various american countries especially so in brazil what was also notable at in those places where there were cases of zika virus is that temporarily after few weeks after those cases the incidence of newborns having neural tube defects or neurological abnormalities like microcephaly wherein the brain and head development is stunted after deliveries of pregnant female after those outbreaks had increased at the same time there was increase in incidences of miscarriages and premature deliveries in those areas following the zika virus outbreaks so that really raised the alarm about this infection and that really brought zika virus as a vector borne disease in a global perspective so what is zika virus so it is nothing but another virus from the flavi virus group which also has other common viruses like dengue and similar to dengue it spreads through the bite of aedes mosquitoes so again as we have discussed in our vector borne diseases in monsoon video it is one of the vector borne infections which spreads through biting of aedes mosquitoes but there are some differences between dengue and zika virus the most important difference when it comes to mode of transmission is that in addition to uh, mosquito bite related transmission this virus is thought to also have vertical transmission so that is the most important thing due to which this has become a global healthcare concern in areas of outbreaks that the virus can spread in a pregnant lady from her to her fetus while the fetus is growing in her uterus so because of this the uh, newborn may have certain neural tube defects brain related abnormalities and in some cases miscarriages or premature deliveries additionally sexual transmission is also thought to be possible of this virus in contrary to others like dengue and chikungunya where there is no sexual transmission reported in certain outbreak areas in countries like france brazil it was noted that around 2 to 3% of people had zika virus detected in their blood samples in the uh, weeks following the outbreak but blood transfusion related uh, uh, spread of this infection has not yet been scientifically proven now there are certain differences in terms of symptoms also but here there is a good news that almost 75 to 80% of patients who catch zika virus infection never develop any symptoms or never develop any illness that is they remain asymptomatic in the remaining 20 to 25% of patients who develop symptoms more than 95% have what we call as extremely mild symptoms so this is a big relief compared to something like dengue where more than 10 to 15% can end up having complications and a large number of patients end up developing symptoms so in those patients who develop those mild symptoms what are the symptoms so fever of course is seen in around 65 to 70% of cases joint pain or arthralgia is seen in another 60 to 65% cases conjunctivitis of the eyes that is seen in around 55 to 60% of cases 
and what is most notable is that more than 90 percent of patients develop a peculiar erythematous reddish maculopapillar rash all over the body but sparing the palms and the soles of the feet now contrary to dengue this virus is very very less commonly associated with frontal headache or periorbital and retroorbital pain which can perhaps help us slightly in differentiating zika virus from dengue virus at the same time contrary to chikungunya this virus has much lesser severity of arthralgia and much shorter durations of joint pains compared to patients with chikungunya who can have fairly prolonged uh, arthralgias and joint pains so there is a big relief on this front so those who happen to get complications in those uh, few cases which were reported in different countries have been noted to be immunocompromised because of some medical illness like hiv or being on steroids or being of extreme elderly age group otherwise by and large this virus doesn't cause any complications in most of the patients who get infected then why is so much uh, concern and why is so much discussion the main reason is vertical transmission friends now as far as treatment is concerned so treatment essentially remains symptomatic because this is a very much self-limited illness wherein our immunity itself is capable of taking care of the virus and curing us from the zika virus related symptoms in case if they happen to develop so treatment essentially involves adequate rest adequate hydration and paracetamol or other milder pain relief medicines to take care of symptoms like fever arthralgia etc apart from this no antiviral medicines have been recommended or found to be useful in zika virus infections and being a virus in viral infection obviously no antibiotics or antibacterials are going to work here so coming to the most important part of it prevention so when this disease has potentially uh, potential to cause panic and also concerns related to vertical transmission and damage to the newborn's uh, nervous system it is very important to follow preventive measures so like we saw in our videos related to vector borne infections in monsoon the essential preventive measures are related to prevention of mosquito bites so from the person who has got zika virus infection mosquito bite should be prevented to that person for at least two weeks from the uh, detection of the infection because the virus is uh, noted to remain in his or her blood for almost 11 to 14 days after the infection is detected and if the mosquito doesn't bite the person who has virus in his body then it is very unlikely to spread it to others at the same time for all others in the surrounding areas it is important to reduce the prevalence of mosquitoes and the chances of getting mosquito bites so wearing of full sleeves clothes especially during dusk and dawn where typically this virus uh, sorry these mosquitoes aedes mosquitoes bite then reducing the potential breeding sites of aedes mosquitoes so like any water accumulations of clear rain water or fresh water which remain beyond five to seven days so any uh, areas around our house the flower pot the plantations the uh, pits on the roads the coconut shells the discarded tires the discarded tins etc anywhere where the water can accumulate those things should be taken care of if there are any accumulations of water around our house where there has been accumulation beyond five to seven days proper insecticide sprays have to be sprayed in the surrounding area fourth within our houses we can use mosquito nets we can use mosquito nets for the uh, beds as well as for the windows and doors and last but not the least use of insect repellents or mosquito repellents so the ones which can be applied directly over the clothes because even if we wear full sleeves clothes the mosquito still has the potential to bite through the clothes and second also the mosquito repellents which can be applied safely directly over our skin so all these things can reduce uh, the chances of getting bitten by the mosquitoes and in as a result the chances of spread of this infection which of course also will help in controlling infections like dengue and chikungunya which can be far more common and prevalent in the surroundings in our city and around us so uh, last but not the least diagnosis anybody who has symptoms which are consistent with zika virus especially in an area where there has been an outbreak pcr test from the blood and urine can help in detecting this virus up to 10 to 14 days after the infection 
Also, IgM ELISA test, which is an antibody based test, can also help in detection, but it remains positive for almost three months after catching the infection. So, it may not help much uh, whether in telling whether the infection has occurred recently or it has occurred any time during last three months, especially because more than 75% patients remain asymptomatic. All these tests can be very much sent to places like National Institute of Virology, that is NIV Pune or some commercially available multiplex tropical fever PCR panels, either those which have dengue, chikungunya and Zika virus uh, panel uh, uh, in a combined test or those which have dengue, chikungunya, Zika, rickettsia, typhoid and malaria, all uh, PCRs club together on the single panel. But of course, even if it is detected through one of these commercially available panels, it is always important that it should be cross-checked by sending urine as well as blood samples to the NIV so as to confirm whether there is an actual case of Zika virus infection. So friends, as we discussed in this video, there is no need to panic as far as Zika virus is concerned because at times we have seen in recent uh, few years that sometimes the disease is not as big as the fear or panic that it creates because of unnecessary and unauthentic information circulating in various media or social media channels. So let us uh, share this video if you found it authentic and useful with as many of your friends and relatives as possible so that we spread correct information and not panic. And as we always say on our Fever Care Center for Infectious Disease channel, we should stay informed to stay healthy. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe the YouTube channel of Fever Care Center for Infectious Diseases. Thank you.